Hello and welcome to Ask George with George de Bell and Elizabeth Potchaby. And it's the end of day three of the fourth test between India and England in Ranchi. Well, hi, George. Uh, what did you make of today? A bit different to, uh, to yesterday. G'day, the botch. Um, yeah, I thought that India fought back really strongly. That, that was the main thing. Um, and that going into tomorrow, they are uh, they're strong favourites at this stage. I, I wouldn't want to put a figure on it, but they're, I think they're strong favourites. Do you think it is a, a foregone conclusion then that India are going to win this, or do you think there is something left in the pitch that England can you know, take oh, a bit of hope from? No, it's definitely not a foregone conclusion. It's definitely not. Um, yeah, if England bowl well, they can make it really difficult. No, it's far too good a game to be that predictable. Um, but these key passages of play keep going India's way in the last couple of tests, last three tests even. And um, it felt like there were some pretty decisive blows today. But no, England can definitely still win. Well, you can read all of George's coverage of England's tour of India and more by subscribing to the Cricketers Digital Offering. And you can do that via the link in the video description. And remember, we'll be producing these videos from every day of the five test series. And you can submit your questions via our social media channels using the hashtag AskGeorge. The first question today is from Nicholas, who asks, why do England do this? Three games in a row, we've blown a chance to win the game. Well, I, I think the first thing to say is there that I don't think today was a classic example of England throwing something away. As much as it was an example of India seizing something from them, I thought, you know, at one stage it looked like India could um, concede a deficit of 150. Uh, and what was it in the end, 46? So they deserve a lot of credit for that. Their tail batted really well. Keeper obviously batted really well. But, but but you know, some of the bowlers really hung in there as well. And I thought England bowled all right. So it was uh, mainly a case of India doing well. With, with, with the bat, sorry, uh, with the ball, India had fantastic spinners. I didn't think that was a an awful batting performance by England. By any means, it wasn't great. But... It was more a case of India bowling well, I thought. I mean, you know, every game is a combination of one side playing well and one side playing poorly, potentially up to a point. I, I did think today was an example of India playing well more than anything. But there were opportunities, you know, England missed, I was going to say dropped, but they missed uh, a chance in the field. You know, I'm not sure Ollie Robinson barely got a hand to a chance that um, he really should have taken, I think. And um, they could have been looking at a lead of maybe 80 or 90 and in a pretty low scoring game that looks you know huge doesn't it have you but, been but, you know honestly just 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 uh, say again i think you do have to to give credit where it's due i think ashwin is a masterful bowler um well, actually all three spinners are called deep on the quiet it's having a brilliant series isn't he um and he played really well with the bat and jarell uh, has shown himself to be uh a really high class uh, batter and a decent keeper as well. So I think, uh, yeah, say again, I think today at least was mainly a, a case of India seizing the initiative. Have you been impressed by India's kind of ability to almost dig in whenever it seems like England are, are getting on top of them, particularly when they're missing so many big players and it is people like Jarrell or Kuldi who, do, who doesn't usually play, um, you know, come into the fore? Yeah, because it's looked at times as if England were getting on top. But it's 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 quite interesting. Rohit is an interesting captain. I, I thought there were there were moments when England were batting in their second innings, for example. I think Crawley hit three fours and an over off Ashwin. Looked look super. Immediately the field goes back. And Crawley is able to pick up singles really quite easily and looked very comfortable. And for a bit there you think, come on, Rohit, what are you doing? You know, press, press. But he's pressing in his own way. He, he he is encouraging Crawley to play certain shots, I think, or all the batters. You know, the way he he, he left a gap behind square, encouraging Bairstow to sweep Jadeja. He leaves a gap at cover for Crawley to play the shot, the, arguably the shot that he was out to. It, it, maybe he's a bit smarter than he is given credit all the time. He's not a particularly demonstrative captain. Uh, but he has, and he's not scoring any runs, but but he has, um, 
he is he seems to be able to uh, unite his side and he seems to have a, a different way of doing things which you know is working and if india win the series 4-1 and they might um you know that's the same result as the last time england and india you would have to say he's done pretty well bearing in mind the resources that he's lacking so um yes i do think india have done really well to to fight back in each game when when the last two games when it looked like england were, were about to put them under a bit of pressure i did think of the last game you know i still think joe root's shot was poor you know the the attempted reverse ramp i thought at the time he played it, it was a it was a, a poor choice of shot and i think that does let a side potentially back into the game but it's only one wicket you've got to kind of take you know 19 more and uh yeah they, they keep doing it and as I said, they keep winning key passages of play. There's not a massive amount between these teams, is there? I mean, England could have got into a strong position in the last match, and they could have put this match beyond India. But they've got some work to do now, eh? Innocent Bystander asks, what's the preferred method among the shrewd, chattering classes? Getting out for 150 playing with the baseball philosophy or getting out for 150 nudging and nerdling? Hello, I know. Um, well, I think that uh, th th it's a binary question, and and that's part of the problem with this thinking. So it depends which batter, and you know. So, so uh, Ben Duckett is a good example of someone who will probably be disappointed with the fact that he was out playing a defensive shot. I just think they're all different, and I, and I don't think it's you know I don't think England batted particularly poorly, as I'll say today. There are, there are some worries. As I've said in my piece, you know, you, they do seem to have a number three who doesn't trust his defence and a number five who hasn't scored, you know, what, what's he done, scored 40 twice, reached 40 twice, 17 innings. You know, that doesn't feel particularly sustainable. But um, I don't think it was a case, it's not, not every day comes down to a referendum on the word that I try and avoid using. I mean, England don't use it. It is a media construct. You know, we're, we're in danger of having eaten ourselves, really, with this debate. England are trying to push the game on a bit. They are scoring at a rate that they have never have done before. And actually, no team has done before, whatever. You know, look at the stats. There's no comparison. But, you know, people have played aggressive cricket before and people have done all sorts of things. But I don't know. This one word to sum everything up, it's bullshit. Come on, let's be honest. It is. And they don't use it. They don't. It was a clever pun, yeah, on Baz and baseball. It worked as a media construct. But to keep judging them on it, I think we've got to be a bit better than that. It's not binary. What did you make of Ben Folkes' innings? I know you've been campaigning on Twitter to have him uh, bumped up the order a bit. Well, I have, uh, and, it, and it's a thought. I mean, it's it's the sort of thing that would be nice to have a chat with, you know, to see what the England management thought of it. Because I can see drawbacks as well. I mean, I'm not sure you could be a specialist number seven batter. It's not really something that exists in the world. I mean, I know people have done it, but not for very long. Josh Butler was one for a bit. But it's not really... Uh, so. So you could argue as someone replied to me on Twitter, that Ben Folk should be able to develop his game and play more shots. That's absolutely fair. But he's got a, a good accumulatory game already, and England actually uh, are a side with quite a few stroke makers, and maybe an accumulator in the middle there isn't the worst thing in the world. Um, and Johnny, it doesn't feel like you'd be demoting him. It's just it's playing to a strength that he's a very aggressive player um and maybe better suited to batting with the tail yeah i do i do think it's worth thinking about but you know uh but yeah as i said i'd be interested to hear other views um ben folks's innings today was i mean uh i mean obviously he wasn't able to uh, score very many runs let's put it really basically what do you want him to do you either want him to farm the strike and take as long as he bloody likes, but score some runs, or you want him to hit out and score runs quickly. He wasn't able to do either. So you'd have to say, on a basic level, it didn't go great. I thought he was out to a super bit of bowling. I mean, it looks like he keeps being out, sort of hitting to mid-wicket or hitting it back to the bowler or whatever, and that looks a bit uh, rubbish. But it was a fantastic ball. <laughs> there are moments when Ashwin looked good, particularly if you're in the ground, actually. 
And when Ashwin doesn't, you can't really see what he's doing. You know, it's quite subtle what he's doing from 70 yards away. But on TV, replays, whatever, action, close-ups, you can see what he's trying to do and stuff. And that, you know, it turned the other way. It's a brilliant bit of bowling. Completely deceived, folks. Credit where it's due. That's what I mean. Today felt like a day where it's more about giving India credit. I'm all for, you know, giving criticism where it's due and fair. But 145 years and under par score, they should have got a few more. But they bowled really well. Danny asks, would England have been more comfortable and batted better if they were 100 runs behind in the first innings? Well, I mean, probably not. They probably <laughs> just would have lost already. Well, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I know what you mean. They seem to be better when it's a backs up the wall disaster emergency, you know, oh, we need a miracle. Here comes Ben Stokes. But um, there aren't always miracles, are there? I mean, there wasn't a miracle in the last game. And there's, there's not a whole hell of a lot Ben Stokes could have done about his dismissals in either innings. Again, make the point. Sometimes you just can't criticise. You're just going to say, well, bold or bad luck. And I think with Ben Stokes, it was mainly a question of bad luck. So, no, um, I know what you mean. I know what you're getting at. You're saying that they're a side that seem to need to be inspired by uh, the chance to be a hero, in which case, look at them go tomorrow. <laughs> uh, David Thomas asks, have you seen a more nervous starter than Pope? Good question. Oh, um, it, I'm sure I have. And I'm trying to think, I mean, you know, I, yeah, I think I have. But as a number three, he is frenetic. It's a worry. Um, I thought his first innings dismissal was worse. You know, coming in against those bowlers on a pitch, which is tricky and helping them, that is tough. Um, and I think things happen very fast. They get through the so over so fast, get no chance to breathe. And I think that... Um, that can happen, you know, batters can be out early. I thought, the, the, the point is that because that can happen, you need to take your chances when you get them. And in the first innings when he was out second ball, I thought it was, I don't know what he was trying to do, you know, down the pitch and playing across the line. Um, I, I suspect he doesn't trust his defensive game. And I, I'm old-fashioned enough to think that if you don't trust your defensive game, you're not going to make a success at number three. But, you know, you could use him as a sort of microcosm of what England are at the moment. He played a miraculous innings earlier in the series, a great innings, fantastic. I don't think one great innings makes a series. I mean, it's more than you can expect from a player, but you've got to have some good innings alongside it. And at the moment, it's feast or famine. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm still not convinced by him as number three, to be honest. Where would you like him to be? I mean, it depends where you want to start. I think Ben Stokes could bat three. But I have had that conversation, and he doesn't want to. He could do it. I'm absolutely sure he could do it. Particularly if he's not going to bowl very much anymore, but who knows whether he might now. But he re reasons that he can rebuild at six and play in the different way as is required. Well, he's some logic there, isn't there? Um, I don't mind... Uh, Pope having a fair go at three, you know, they're investing a lot of time in him. But, you know, if you invest for a long time in something, you want some rewards. You know, there's some good players to come back into the side, notably Harry Brook, and someone's going to have to miss out. Now, you would think at the moment it's Johnny Bairstow, but Ollie Pope has been talked about for a long time as if, oh, he's the vice captain, he's always going to play. Well, but I did say this before the first test of the series, I think, and uh, that, you know, he, he's having a lot of time invested in him. And he responded by playing, uh, and I would have left him out if Brooke had been available. I would have done. Don't think England would have done. Um, and he responded with a truly magnificent innings. So what do I know? But, um, yeah, you know, in an ideal world, the route has three, doesn't he? But he doesn't want to. And we've been there and we've done that. And they've given up on it. So... Uh, someone has to do it, and it's his way to get in the side, and they believe in him, and they think he's the future. But I still think to be a good test number three, you've got to be able to have strong defence, and I don't think he trusts his. Jack Rule asks, so who is bowling India out, Bashir or Hartley? 
well, it could be James Anderson or Ollie Robinson, couldn't it? But I mean, it doesn't matter. They're going to have to bowl a lot better than they did this evening. Um, you know, Hartley bowled poorly. And when you're defending a very low total, a very low target, he just bowls too many poor balls, I'm afraid. He bowls great balls, though. So, yeah, Hartley's going to be important. You would think those two are most important. But I would have started with the, with the seamer, with a, at least a seamer. Well, that's exactly what Simon Landau asks. Uh, should Jimmy have bowled tonight? Well, there's another another fella. This is Ali Robinson as well. He's, you know, been, had an underwhelming game with the ball so far. Um, look, I think so. I think it would have been worth it. I, I, I think that um, Joe as well in particular would have been relieved to see Root bowl that first over. Run it as well, really. I mean, I know Joe as well's a left-hander and Root's an off-spinner, but I, I think he'd have been relieved. So uh, uh, the reason that Robinson comes into the thinking here is because I think maybe he, he might have made the batters play a bit more if he's bowling at his best. You know, Anderson, we know, obviously he's brilliant, but he does do what Anderson does, which is naturally bowls a very dry length and says, go on, hit me if you can. And if they go for it, they, he hates giving runs. And there might have been um, some sense in just... I, I don't know. I, personally, I would have been tempted to go uh, for a seamer of uh, at least one end and maybe both. And finally, Greg Boone asks, I'm confused. Do we like umpire's call or not? Well, I don't know. You make up your own mind. But, but I mean, people keep saying to me, oh, what do you think about the umpire? No, I've never spoken about the umpire. I haven't got any opinion. I think they've umpired fine, haven't they? It doesn't matter whether you... I don't mind if you get rid of umpire's call. There'd be very quick tests, which personally I think is quite good in the era of perhaps shorter attention spans. But I don't know why you're asking me. I've not mentioned them. <laughs> Fair enough. Are we done? Yeah, I think so. I will have a, another awkward silence if you like, but yeah. Um... No, 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 no. Well, let's do that. Yeah, let's, uh, should we see how long we can do it? But I can tell you that... When Jared and I were doing uh, session reports for Crick Info, we had a competition, one ashes, to see how long we could leave the gap between our names and where we were. So you'd say things like, this is George. Don't bow. In Perth, for ESPN. Crick Info. It was amazing how, what we got away with. But I guess no one was watching. <laughs> <laughs> three o'clock in the morning or something anyway well thanks george and we'll be back with more ask george uh, on day four the final day yeah cool nice on the botch see you in a bit